As a Christian, the number one thing that you need to become familiar with is the Word of God. Because false prophets, false messiahs, and false apostles have gone out into the world. And they are directly contradicting the words of the Bible and the words of even Christ himself. The words of the disciples, the words of the original apostles, they are directly contradicting them. And so many Christians are unaware of it because they don't know what is actually written in the Bible. Imagine, can you imagine if the early Christians had access to the Bible like we do? They would be devouring it. But we need to be like the Bereans in the Bible and to study the word and to test all the words that to test all the teachers, all these um, prophets, everything that they say against the word of God. Are they using the word rightly? Are they twisting it into something new and strange? Are they saying only what your itching ears want to hear? This is the test from God. And this is written in his scriptures. These false prophets come out and they speak these things, but these happen so that you will be, God is testing you. Will you listen to them or will you listen to him? Will you love what they say or will you love him with all your heart and soul and mind? Are you going to run after what they say? Or will you hear what he says even when he gives you a difficult truth to deal with? He's giving you a choice and it says in his word that this is to see, to this is to see, this is to test. Do you love him or do you love what somebody else is saying? Somebody who is not going to lay their life down for you like God did. You know, these false prophets arise and they do perform in even Jesus himself said in Matthew 24 verse 24 he said these false prophets will arise and they will perform great signs and wonders so that in itself cannot be verification about what they are saying we can't just take a miracle and say this proves that what this person is saying, what they are teaching, is right. Jesus himself warned against this false signs, false wonders. We cannot trust in that. But we need to know the word of God. Even when somebody comes and performs something miraculous in front of us. Like the all of the old um, false prophets they were able to do things the magicians in egypt and we know in the end times we are warned they are going to be able to do things and people will be amazed we need to stay vigilant stay sober-minded know what god says to us know that he calls us to constantly be self-examining our faith, our own faith, be sure that you are in the true faith. It is simple. This is the simple faith. It, we are believing in a very simple faith. We are not saved by our works. God does not rescue us by our works. We don't pay for his blessings. And some of these false prophets, oh, get, send your, sow your seed and send your seed over and do this and do that thing to get free. No, God breaks our chains. It's without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is our faith, by our faith that we are justified. And even when Jesus performed signs, wonders, and miracles, he didn't do it when people performed a work for him. It wasn't a reward. The things that he gives, the things that God gives, are gifts freely given. And a gift is no longer a gift. It is no longer by grace. If it is earned in any way, there may be a leaning on leaning on the shoulders with our fellow brethren and seeking help and counseling from them, but there is no works involved. We are interdependent with our fellow brothers and sisters. 
where they can, and I believe in the gifts, where um, somebody may have, may prophesy over you. And I do think this stuff, like I'm not talking about prophesying by adding to scripture, but a personal prophecy for somebody where if they, they don't know anything about you, but they go up to you and they know something about your situation that got revealed to them and they say something that affirms you or guides you into the right direction. I believe this sort of, the gifts, there is a right way of practicing the gifts. And we are interdependent on our brothers and sisters because the spirit moves in those gifts as he wills, as he sees fit. And so we are the body of Christ. We uphold each other. But we also need to beware of those who are false. And they may have good intentions. In the new age, I had all the good intentions in the world, but I was wrong. I was out of fellowship of, with Christ. I was, in fact, an enemy consorting with his, with his enemies, the demons, the other spirits. And I was not pointing people into a personal relationship with Christ. I was not... I was not bringing up repentance, and there are those false teachers, false prophets, false evangelists out there, false apostles who their message never comes with conviction. Their message never comes with even Jesus preached repentance. And it doesn't have to be repent, 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 but there is a way of preaching repentance where you are revealing someone's sin, but then bringing the answer to them. You're bringing them to the cross and you are inviting them to accept the free gift that Jesus offers to everybody. We are saved by faith. And our works are like filthy rags. Even when an apostle or some prophet somebody tells us to perform or do something to please God, we do not please him without faith. If we do not have faith, it is by our faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, my heart is grieved by the false prophets who are out there, the false apostles who are out there, the true sign of an apostle is not the workings of miracles, the healings. That Those are the signs of believers, per Mark 16. These signs shall follow those who believe. But the signs of an apostle, they are the worst persecuted people. Their name means sent. They are sent to the unreached places of the world. And you almost never hear from them because they they have no concern for this, for social media, for performing or anything like that. They are out there. They were sent to the unreached places. They are out there and they are preaching the gospel and they are suffering horribly for it. They are probably the most severely persecuted class, I say class loosely, class within Christianity. They are the servant of servants within Christendom. And so when somebody like Catherine Crick or anybody else claims to be an apostle, but they are not out there doing the work of an apostle, I do take issue with that. I take absolute righteous offense at that. I am indignant at their claim. But before this video gets too long, I do want to leave it there. That is all I wanted to make this video about is, you know, ex exhort each other to just 
stay in the simple faith of Christ. Don't be running after this anointing, that that anointing, um, this the power of God's over here, the power of God is over there. Now, when you accept Christ and the body of believers, that is where the power of God is. These people who claim special anointings and special displays of the power of God, they are puffing themselves up, even if they are acting humble about it, they are humble bragging. While, while they're denigrating and while they're speaking badly of other Christians. But I'm going to just leave it there. I hope you all have a blessed day, a blessed rest of your week. Um, please take care. Um, I didn't make a script this time, so I do hope I stayed on track. I hope everything made sense. But um, have a good day. God bless.